Hello, and welcome to the lesson which finally combines quantum mechanics with the periodic table. We'll use the orbital energy levels from the last lesson to place electrons into their proper orbitals on the table. Then we'll learn how to write an electron configuration for the electrons in an atom. Last lesson, we learned how to draw an Aufbau diagram, which orders the subshells in order of increasing energy. In this lesson, we'll build up each element in the periodic table by adding electrons to the lowest available energy level. We'll start with hydrogen and helium at the bottom and continue filling upwards from there. I highly recommend you have a copy of the periodic table handy to follow along at home. But before we begin, you need to know how to write electron configurations. An electron configuration indicates how many electrons are in each subshell. In blue, we have the energy level. Then we have the subshell shape, either S, P, D, or F. And lastly, in green, we superscript the number of electrons in that subshell. For example, the electron configuration 1S2 tells me I have two electrons in the 1S subshell. The element we'll start with will be the first element on the table, hydrogen. Neutral hydrogen has one electron placed in a 1s orbital, which we indicate using an arrow. It doesn't matter whether you draw the arrow up or down. The electron configuration for hydrogen is 1s superscript 1. That means there's one electron in the 1s subshell. Neutral helium has two electrons, both of which live in a 1s orbital. The direction of the arrow represents the spin. So if our first arrow pointed up, then our second arrow has to point down and vice versa. The electron configuration of helium is 1s superscript 2. There are two electrons in the 1s subshell. This means helium has a full first energy level, which gives it extra chemical stability. Next, we have lithium. Lithium has three electrons, so we'll add the third electron to the next vacant orbital, which is the 2s orbital. Notice that lithium is in the second row of the periodic table, and it's the first element with electrons in the second energy level. The electron configuration for lithium is 1s2, 2s1, indicating that we have two electrons in the 1s subshell and one electron in the 2s subshell. Next up, element number four, beryllium. There's still room in the 2s subshell for another electron, so the fourth electron moves in. The electron configuration for beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. It has two electrons in both the 1s and the 2s subshells. The fifth element is boron, and the fifth electron is placed in the next vacant subshell, the 2p. This is the first element with an electron in a p orbital, shown in blue on the diagram. The electron configuration for boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. If you count up the superscripts, in the electron configuration, you'll get the total number of electrons in the atom. Sixth up, and my personal favorite, carbon. The sixth electron that moves in follows something called Hund's rule. Hund's rule states that electrons prefer to have their own orbital if one is available at the same energy level. Furthermore, they will match the spin of the other electrons in that subshell. So carbon's sixth electron is added to an empty p orbital with its spin in the same direction as the first 2p electron. Carbon's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, indicating that each of the first three subshells contain two electrons. Nitrogen has an additional electron, which goes in the last vacant 2p orbital spot spin matched to the other two electrons. Nitrogen's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Moving on to element eight, oxygen. The eighth electron is forced to share a 2p orbital with another electron, but it has to have the opposite spin, 
so that it has unique quantum numbers or else it violates the Pauli exclusion principle. The most reactive element, fluorine, adds its ninth electron to another p orbital. Neon, element 10, puts its 10th electron in the last open 2p orbital. Notice that neon's first and second energy levels are completely filled. This gives neon the characteristic chemical stability of all the noble gases. Here are the electron configurations of the period two elements. In an exam, you may be asked to write the electron configuration of any main group element. I strongly recommend enlisting the periodic table for help. Notice that the elements on the left side of the table have their last electron placed in an s orbital. And the elements on the right side have their last electron placed in a p orbital. The noble gases will always have full s and p subshells for their highest energy level. As we continue along the periodic table, writing out the full electron configuration will become increasingly arduous. That's why chemists will use the noble gas abbreviation to represent all the inner electrons comprising that noble gas. I will be using the noble gas abbreviation for the rest of this exercise. The next eight elements, from sodium to argon, follow the same pattern as the previous eight elements. I've used noble gas abbreviations to stand in for the first 10 electrons in the electron configuration, but in your own heads, if you want to, you can replace that neon with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Note that using the noble gas abbreviation makes it very clear why the elements in the same column have similar chemical properties. They have similar electron configurations for their outermost at electrons. The electrons which we abbreviated away are called inner electrons or core electrons, and they are not involved in reactions. However, the outer electrons, especially those in S and P orbitals, are called the valence electrons. The valence electrons are the most important electrons because they determine the chemical properties of the element. The alkali metals shown here all have a single valence electron in an S subshell. We'll resume our count with potassium, but before we do, let's bring up that subshell energy level diagram from the last lesson. Remember that the 4S subshell is lower in energy than the 4D subshell. So after filling the 3P subshell, we do not put any electrons in the 3D subshell. The next electrons go in the 4S. This means the electron configuration for potassium is argon 4S1. Calcium has another electron, which finishes out the 4S subshell. The next element, scandium, is the first element with an electron in a D subshell. It is also the first element of the transition metals, which I've highlighted in yellow. Because the D subshell has five orbitals and fits 10 total electrons, the transition metals widen the periodic table by 10 spaces. The last transition metal of the fourth period is zinc. Zinc has a full 3D subshell, which means it doesn't behave very much like the other transition metals. The next element, gallium, has its outermost electron placed in the next available energy level, the 4P subshell. This pattern is followed through the next two periods until we get to lanthanum the first element with an F electron. Note that, as we saw il illustrated in the Aufbau diagram, the 4F subshell is filled after the 6S subshell, but before the 5D subshell. This would be very difficult to memorize if you didn't have the technique of drawing an Aufbau diagram. The element lanthanum gives its name to the 14 element wide section of the table, the lanthanides. The lanthanides are very heavy, and very rare. And their chemical properties are very similar. 
We won't talk much about the lanthanides in this class. All right, time for a practice problem. Pause the video and write the electron configuration for a neutral antimony atom. Here's a solution. I find it easiest to use the periodic table to know which subshells I'm filling. I'll also use noble gas shorthand to save me some writing. The last noble gas before antimony was krypton, so I start with a KR in brackets. I'll start counting upwards from krypton. The first electrons added after the noble gas are always S electrons. I know that these are 5s electrons because they are in the fifth period. Because I moved two spaces to the right, I know that I need to add two electrons. So I write 5s superscript 2. As I continue to the right, the next 10 spaces are transition metals, which have d electrons. The d shell is always one number behind the s and p shells. So I write 4d superscript 10. Now I'm only three spaces away from my goal. So the next subshell is the 5p. I write 5p superscript 3 for a full electron configuration of krypton, 5s2, 4d10, 5p3. In the next lesson, we'll continue to explore how the order of the energy levels gives the periodic table its characteristic shape and why elements within the s block, f block, d block, and p block share many common properties.